That's really the part that I'm, that, that I'm looking for. That, that part. There's no mountain you will climb up coming out to me. No wall you won't kick down, how you won't tear down, coming out to me. See you one more time, you won't be standing. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming out to me. No wall you won't kick down, how you won't tear down, coming out. To me. Hallelujah. We receive the miracle of open eyes, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Third John chapter 1. Third John, just one chapter. We'll read verse 2. Third John. And I'll just establish a few things and we'll pray. It's our desire to always make these conferences rich and balanced and very powerful. And I pray that this will be experienced in the name of Jesus. Please read with me. It's projected. One, two, read. Beloved. Uh-huh. One more time. Just keep verse two. Yes. So, God speaking to, through his servant, desires our prosperity, but then he desires that we prosper even as our souls prosper. Please listen. The subject of prosperity is not about money. The subject of prosperity is a battle for your soul. You have to understand this. The subject of prosperity is a battle for time and a battle for your soul. This is what you are fighting to redeem. It is not about money. It is not about houses. It is a battle for your soul and it is a battle for time. I just need to establish this foundation. The most expensive thing on earth is time. So says a dying man. A dying man does not need a bigger property. A dying man, listen carefully please, does not need more education. A dying man does not need a contract honored. A dying man needs time. That means no matter what I take from you, if I leave time, I didn't cheat you. The real way to cheat you is to take time are we together now because the unit of destiny is time you have to follow me this morning please the unit destiny is a function of time that means whatever i do to your time i'm doing to your destiny are we together it is one of the reasons why things like delay is very dangerous because delay is a system of manipulating time. It is not the event you are robbed of experiencing, but the time factor. Because everything that works on this earth is time tagged. Are you getting it now? This is balanced, sound prosperity teaching. That will not latch your heart to wealth, yet you will lay up wealth as gold. This is not about money. Because the moment our idea is just about money, 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 we will miss it just like Ajimi was sharing. You have, to look, you have to look at God's mind, his idea. God gave man time. Now watch this. It takes time to know God. It takes time to impact a generation. It takes time to be a good father. It takes time to be a good husband and a wife. Are we together? It takes time to build quality relationships that matter. It takes time to know the Holy Spirit. It takes time to be there for people. And the devil found out that since every good thing is a function of time, 
let me find a way of number one taking away time and if i cannot take away time then i waste time listen carefully it is a battle for time everywhere satan sees time his attention is attracted why do they have time and what is being done in that time please listen jesus was speaking and this is what he said are we together this morning i must walk the works of him that sent me while there is time while it is day why for the night cometh when no man only spirits will be able to walk at that time but once you are a man with a mortal body you will not be able to walk so there is time tag i must raise my children while it is time for the night comes when i cannot raise them again i must build relationship with my aged parents while it is time a day will come i will not see mama again and satan says that time is what i want listen carefully this has nothing to do with money it is a battle of time and a battle of your soul are we together now But Satan discerned the way men live on earth. Listen carefully. That this system is economically driven. Are we together now? That means that the way we live as far as the matters that pertain unto life in this kingdom is concerned. We use the time that we have. Really, that is the real value we have. Because your skill came because you had time. So he takes the time and then you exchange it alongside your skill. And you receive many rewards including monetary rewards. So what Satan found out is that since by his study of many years. Most men will give the greatest share of their time for money. And he said that's it. I found the key. Uh, Satan continued to research by himself through decades and found out that the highest amount of the time of men is invested in looking for money. So he said, now let me do something to that money to make you keep pursuing it all the days of your life. Since if, if I can kill you, best for me. But if I cannot kill you, then I will do something to your time. Poverty is not about lack of things. It's about a state where perpetually your time has been sacrificed to Satan. Let me show you three scriptures that will change your life. Proverbs chapter 22, please. God is helping us this morning in the name of Jesus. It matters how we are taught and it matters how we are mentored on the things of the spirit. The scope of our spiritual understanding. We'll read verse 2 and verse 7. Proverbs 22 verse 2 and verse 7. Please let's read together. One, two, read. The rich and the poor meet together. Where do they meet? In this space called the earth. And the Bible says the Lord is the maker of them all. God never made them so. He made them all. Their decisions and their understanding separated them into these cadres. The rich and the poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. So whether you choose to be Abraham, whether you choose to be Lazarus, whether you choose to be a rich man, God still made you. He did not make you that way. He is the creator. Are we together? Now verse 7 is where it gets very disturbing. Read please. One to read. And the borrower is servant to the lender. One more time, please. That means the rich unbeliever will rule over the poor prayer warrior. The rich anything rules over the poor anything on anyone. Provided you are poor, the disadvantage of poverty is that it subjects you to a point where you no longer have control of your time understand this we are dealing with time here 
if I am a servant, I do not have luxury of my time again. You tell me when to wake up. That's why every time Satan wanted to stop the timing of the arrival of Jesus, he will send Israel to be slaves. So that in slavery, they did not have control over their time. Now, please watch this. There was a strategy in Egypt. There are so many things in my head. Lord, grant grace. Be praying for me while you are listening to me. Eh? Because there is a burden that a generation must offload once and for all. Otherwise, very soon we will kill one another and eat our children. Was it not hunger that made two women to eat their children? That, that story has not stopped. Hunger will make even women if women eat their children imagine what the men will do to their children because can a mother forget her suckling child so by the time a mother turns her child into her meal when you send your daughter to a marriage that should not be because of financial advantage you eat your child So this, this, is not, this is not the kind of teaching to choose whether you want to listen to or not. You will be selfish ignoring this teaching because you are listening for the sake of a generation and your children, born or unborn. Are we together? Genesis chapter 42. I'd like us to read the first two verses. Genesis chapter 42. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus. Let's read together, it's projected. One, two, read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, stop. Where was corn? Corn in Egypt. Egypt has always represented a place of bondage and captivity. An antichrist structure, but provided there was corn there, the prophet said unto his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Somebody is about to send his children to captivity because of corn. Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. A prophet can die when there is no corn. I'm a prophet. But where we are now, there is no corn. And I've heard that there is corn in Egypt. It's not my desire to send you to a place of slavery. But hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. The only reason why Israel goes to Egypt is hunger. I heard that there was corn in Egypt. And I'm sending you to go there now. Eventually they got there. And then there arose a pharaoh. That did not know Joseph and he turned God's people into slaves that's how they got there while they became slaves the privilege that was given to them was that the straw was given to them then they would make the bricks and the mortar the moment Moses came to propose an exodus this is what Pharaoh said is it not because you still have time to call upon your God. The remaining time we gave you to rest. You are now using it to call on God. And hear that you should be free. Occupy them. Stop giving them straw. Let them use the remaining time. It's a strategy that our generation is still suffering today. The moment he sees that you still have three extra hours. He will do something to the economy. To make sure the remaining time is now used to look for money. Even as your soul prospers. The world system is that you prosper even as your soul dies. I can know what economy you are operating by. Not by looking at your bank account. I look at the quality of your soul. When I see that as you rise your soul dies. I know that you have tampered with an economy that is not from heaven. So Satan does not mind giving you money. You will get gold as dust. What he's looking for. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Profit, profit. Business now. If he gains what? The whole world. And loses his soul. You paid for the world with your soul. Like you pay for water with money. 
the commodity of exchange is your soul when satan took jesus up the mountain they were not talking business material things bow to me just give me access to your soul and i will give you all of this that is still the strategy till today it's a battle of your soul my brothers and my sisters and it's a battle of time it's not a battle of affluence it's not a battle of pedigree and all of this a battle the real arch enemy of satan is one who has both resources and a healthy soul because you pay the price with your soul i found this years ago and it changed my life that this is the mystery behind the decadence that continues to happen over people's spiritual lives you would notice that for many people maybe whilst on campus they still have some little time and then they give god everything and suddenly things begin to change by the time they get jobs they hardly have time for god and the moment the moment the devil knows that you are hearing him a sermon that will lift you he can make you promoted satan doesn't always demote he will do anything that will take your soul including relocating you to a wealthy place the idea has never been money it's like a meter in the spirit he looks at your life versus your time and your soul the moment he finds out your soul is prospering he would do something to your time battle of time it takes time to know god it takes time to lock yourself for a whole day to say lord reveal yourself to me i want to hear you the moment that happens here comes the pta letter everything is growing except your salary your needs are growing the troubles are growing and then you look at your pta letter and you hold it for a long time as if you are not seeing it and that pressure alone will make you to round up that prayer immediately you were browsing how to know God and you didn't know when you started browsing a fast way to pay a child's school fees enter even as your soul prospers the generation that will ignore this message is the generation that will pay for the, the price of their foolishness with their children I thank God for the person who is teaching you this because most times we think people teach finance because they do not have anointing they are trying to remedy for the frustration of not being spiritual so they choose an area that can explain away their lack of power it is very important to be balanced the area of imbalance becomes the edge of Satan in a man's life Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself lack of resources has been the greatest basis of distraction if i ask all of us to write our prayer request now and i have the opportunity to read it i mean some will say must i write it i can say it i need money i'm in trouble there's uh, the time to write i can say it. this is my problem listen to me The name of Jesus, you've heard me say, is extremely heavy. It takes money to carry it. The name of Jesus is extremely heavy. It will take resources to lift up that name. Even as your soul prospers. So he becomes a CEO. And while he becomes a CEO, his soul continues to go down. You are buying the cars you are buying the houses but your soul continues to go down your children will follow after the backsliding state of your soul and the bible says you did not profit in that business of destiny you lost because you gave away your soul for wealth now here's where the attack comes if you say satan my soul belongs to god and i will prosper he will isolate you as a case study and say let me see the technology by which you will step into this system and still rise financially 
and then your soul will still prosper no bow to me and i will give you the treasures or refuse to bow and i will manipulate your time and your life to a point that it will compel you to bow notice they saw the ease with which jesus was doing ministry and they sent the scribes and the pharisees and they didn't seem to understand him the next set of people they sent were the tribute collectors they sent finance people come and do something to his time embarrass him corrupt his message create a case financially against him so that his message will not be heard and they brought the issue of tax not salmon not you are a good man you are changing society we had the other day that you healed a madman congratulations as the government we are happy mm -mm. that was not their concern we hear that you are doing this thing easy because you are not paying tax you claim to come from god you claim to be obedient but you are violating this and jesus looked at them and said peter go to the fish i i want to show you something you will not have power over my time I know what you are looking for go go to the fish take his coin give to him let him go then he said give to God what belongs to God and while you are doing so Caesar will come immediately so make sure you prepare Caesar's own so that as soon as Caesar comes you give to Caesar too what belongs to Caesar if you give to God what belongs to God Caesar will come the moment you start giving God time get ready Caesar will send the tax collectors he will send them as increased bills he will send them as multiplied school fees he would send them as the need to relocate he will send them as an angry landlord who does not know why he's angry and he said while you are serving God prepare Caesar's own because Caesar does not hear stories give him his coin He said the peacemakers are those who inherit the earth you make peace when you settle both god and caesar if you settle god alone you will not have peace you are not a peacemaker you must find a way of settling caesar is god speaking to us today yes, god forbid but imagine that we're in this conference now and because of a need some financial need whether for personal or whatever reason we now after preaching powerfully like this the next thing i manipulate the prophetic grace upon my life and start seeing your account and say you stand up you have seven million five hundred thousand when i prophesy like that and you are shaking i will use the opportunity to extract caesar's own out of your account quickly It may not be that I'm a bad man. While I saw that account, I just remembered my child's school fees. I said, how much is there? I mean, you can quickly smuggle out money. And because you are shaking under the anointing, you would think it's the anointing that is making me do all. The anointing came, but my flesh mixed with it. Because my belly is hungry. Even Jacob goes to Egypt to find bread. When there is corn in Egypt, he can give away his sons. I made up my mind that I will never worship money I made up my mind that in the name of Jesus we will inspire a generation correctly but to do that you will need are we doing anything wrong help us please you will need resources Satan hates men who have time and money it's like having water and fire together coexisting because he knows what you can do with time give a man time he can find God give a backslider time he can return to God give a cross person time he can find the cross and go back to the blessing but once you are distracted and there is no time was it not because there was time listen there was time that was why the disciples were listening to Jesus. A time came when Satan started doing something and they said, Master, we have left all 
our concerns are beginning to mount up you are keeping quiet about this what is our court in this tell us now because we've left too much and what is happening in the economy now is distracting our focus and jesus said i get it no man who has left this or that or that but you will gain this in this life when jesus was caught and went to the cross the disciples were angry in john 21 Peter said, I go a fishing. Let me go back to what I was doing with my time. Before this karma called Jesus came to distract me. And the remaining disciples said, we go with you. And then they went back and they were fishing and could not catch any fish. Because Satan wanted to keep them there. For as long as you don't catch fish, you will continue. But here Jesus came. My God, Jesus inspires me. When you catch fish, you will leave the sea. But when there is no fish, you will remain there. Let me show you how Jesus solved that problem. Immediately, Jesus shows up. He says, little children, do you have any catch? Your time is being wasted there. And then he says, cast your net to the right side. And they caught fish that there was no more need to stay there. He said, now you can come and give me your attention. I want to tell you something that is a destiny information. But I can't tell you because there is no fish in your net. Come. And then when he sat down, he now said, forget the issue of fish. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me? Now, Simon had gotten fish. He said, yeah, Lord, you know. He said, no. Feed my lamb. How will I feed when the sea is not giving me fish? It takes fish to feed his lamb. When there is fish in your house, you can feed Islam. Please hear what I'm telling you. I can tell you why there is a widespread of joblessness. It's related to the spiritual state of many young people in Nigeria. Because the moment you are a graduate and there are so, the, the burden is on you. Your father sees you praying. You say you are doing dry prayer and fasting. He will first keep quiet. One day when he gets annoyed, he will open that door while you are praying. And say, I was a pastor before you were born. Don't be stupid. Go out as a young man and look for something. You will be forced to round up that prayer in the middle of a revelation that will answer a generation's question. This is not about money, my brothers and my sisters. This is about the destiny of a generation as a function of time. A very wonderful man, come, husband and wife. You got married, happy couples, until money came. Are we together? Until what? Money issues came. Now she has twins. And the guy said he didn't plan for twins. But that doesn't change anything. Are we together now? And that's where the trouble starts. No food to eat. In-laws are calling. They now start hiding their monies from one another. Smuggling it through third-party bank accounts to reach to settle people quietly. They start suspecting one another. Stealing from one another. What a sword could not do, money did. It would tear this family into pieces. The man who started ministry with integrity and truth. When he started the ministry, they were using a mat. But now that they need a building, the budget is three billion. And he says, I can't waste this prophetic grace. First, you would follow it quietly. Just give as God helps you. Nobody's, I'm warning, give as God is, is talking to you. And they now keep quiet. Later, he says, okay, you will not see me free again. Because it looks like, you people are abusing this grace. This message is a message of exemption. To take us away from that which can cause a man to waste his life. And waste his destiny. You can start ministry well as a pastor. But the truth is that by the time your needs get overwhelming, you will start choosing where to go. Say, so let me see how many members first and how many givers. Let me watch a video somewhere. Did they raise money? I want to be sure of what, because I'm leaving my wife and my children. I'm hoping that this is the ministration that will bring my child school fees. 
Then the day you get there, rain falls and people don't come. And you are angry while you are preaching and people don't know why because you've calculated it. Look, let, let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters. If it is God you want to serve, you will not serve him carelessly. You serve God with intelligence. There are things that must be settled to allow you the time to worship God. Are we together? You always hear me say it, that people go to pray and spend six hours. You think they are crying for souls. You think in the prayer they are having encounters. They are worrying. 80% of the time they are on the ground thinking. Just because they are not out for you to see, you can think that they've spent six hours praying. Lord, why is my life like this? Is this how, will I serve you and die this way? Is this how everything about my life is going to be? And while that is happening, Satan will manipulate someone to send a text to say, I'm sorry, I didn't want to tell you, but I need to tell you, I've watched your life and this you're serving God is a shame. The devil will use it and add, you see, you see God, you see what I'm saying? Now it's a shame. They say it's a shame. And you will get up with a negative conclusion that as far as me and God, have you seen people who will tell you, I used to do this. Don't, if it's tongues, I prayed in tongues, but don't even bring that issue. Night vigil, I started my night vigil from four till they will tell you that. Say yours that you are doing just nine to two. Is that vigil? I prayed from nine to two. Where is the God? Our children will not go into slavery because of hunger. Are we blessed? Yes. That you can lock your house with your wife and children and say this week we are spending time with God. And when Caesar comes, you say, Caesar, I will open the gate. Check somewhere there. There are fishes. Pick your coin and go back. Caesar will always go back. When there is coins the strength of caesar is when there is no coin he will harass you just when you want to worship god some people from your village will just come in a van that they came to greet you they say we've heard about what god is doing and we we, we just came to spend time and now you are in a tight corner because you have to honor them the budget already is running into something that will stop your prayer. Is God speaking to us this morning? Now listen very carefully. The Bible says Jesus is speaking and he gave a parable. He said the kingdom of God is likened to a man having a pearl, a precious pearl. And that it fell somewhere in darkness. And the first thing that man did was to find a candle. To find what? To recover the, the treasure. You need two things. A candle and a broom. He said he got a candle. Lit that candle and began to sweep that room. Wherever that pearl is, you must come out to sweep the room. And the moment it came, he found it. So when you find out that something is not in your life, you need light. The light of God. Exact spiritual illumination. Not just a random communication of truth. There is an exact body of truth allocated for the financial blessing of the saints. It's a body of knowledge that can be exhausted. It's not random. The truths of scripture will not cover for themselves randomly no you are you can be blessed and anointed and heal the sick and still be poor because the truths do not replace they complement so the presence of one truth will not automatically solve the problem of another truths are like the buildings the rooms in a house you always hear me give this example i can have two keys out of 10 rooms i may have the key to the rest room if I want to ease myself, then fortunate for me, I have the key. But if I do not have the key to the kitchen and I'm hungry, the key to the restroom will do me no good. I will hold the key to the restroom. I have a key, but not the key allocated for the kitchen. 
and there are times you open these keys in different ways there are some you turn three times there are others you turn a padlock there are others you have to open a lock you have to know the key that opens the room that you desire you are my God a generation can be blessed and still passionate about God we were not designed to choose no to choose whether you want to be wealthy or spiritual that choice was given by religion not God are we blessed please you can reject poverty from a carnal sensual materialistic standpoint I hate poverty I hate poverty because there is already lost there are we together now and so your your hatred is is a derivative of lost not understanding but you can genuinely hate poverty because of the effect you have seen it cause your life and the kingdom there are many of you today you got books from the throne that are supposed to go to the nations but this God of mammon stamped your impact and kept it at a level. You said God told you that this material should reach the nations. There are people who have died today and it's money that killed them. There are people who died today, it's poverty that killed them. Poverty is a spirit, it can kill. There are people in marriages today that should not be Poverty held them like an usher directs you to a seat and says, sit here. I redirect your destiny, not by a discussion. I use hunger to take you away from the will of God. Are we together? Now let me share with us two keys. Do we still have time for two of them? We thank you, O oh God, for giving us understanding. It is understanding that sets men free. The entrance of thy word giveth light. And then it gives understanding to the simple. So the next time you see poverty, remember time. Don't remember ego. Don't remember they will say I'm not succeeding. Leave all that one. Time. My destiny is suffering right now because there's no, there's no money. The health of your marriage, your relationship, your children. There are children who have been delayed today by poverty. Poverty chose that you will not go to school for the next four years and they remain there. And let me tell you this. It is dangerous to prosper alone. It's the same thing as being poor. If all the brothers of Joseph had the same dream, Joseph would not go to prison. But because one over 12, one over, yes, one over 12 had a dream. The 11 says, so what are we? In Nigeria today, the average man, no matter how greedy and wicked you are, there are at least four people praying that you rise so that they can eat. Are we together? So the issue of your need being met does not mean the problem has been solved. Your wealth must be transgenerational for you to really rest. Enough to pay for every argument that can come enough to pay for the conflict no matter the wickedness the jealousy the the contentions no matter how many people caesar sends they can all go back with their gold and let you focus on the things of god this is my desire psalm 82 5 to 7 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness 
all the foundations of the earth are out of course please understand they know not knowledge neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says have i not said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high verse 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes so the thing is to get understanding he says in all you're getting get understanding get understanding Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart in fact the bible puts it this way it says the assignment of the god of this world is to blind the minds of people he creates a veil he shrouds your intelligence with confusion so we continue to shadow box and to guess but god is giving us light two principles i'm going to share and then we're done let me use my people please stand here just stand here facing me look at this the first thing the lord will just stand facing me that's what i mean just turn this way join them darlings thank you now watch this true success is not sought after you don't seek success you don't seek success when you look for money or you look for success you will never find it that, that that ideology has to be corrected that success is sought for success money is pursued it is not in the bible in this kingdom you do not pursue money please dress back a little if you will not just just to the back now watch this life please look up life what i'm teaching you now is called the law of transformation it's called the law of the mind please listen very carefully that your life is akin to a mirror a man standing in front of a mirror if i stand in front of a mirror and there's something on my face do i put my hand through the mirror to correct it i correct it here and the guy in the mirror will also correct are we together now that mirror is your physical world the real you please listen carefully the real you is not the physical world the physical world is an expression of the realities that are happening within you you have to understand this at every realm of life level one level two level three level four there are possibilities that have been invested by God's intelligence in that life. That means that when I am at this level, say, there are certain things that will naturally come at this level. But there are others that will not come until I grow. Please listen. Now, I can choose, let's call this level three. And I'm here at level one in life. I can see the results of level three and want to draw them back to my level life it will be like pulling a rubber ring it will return back because the law is that you grow to the version of yourself that attracts the possibilities that come every level in life has possibilities to it are we together now yes a fake life is an attempt to pull a possibility that is higher than your realm of understanding and reality to your life either because of ego or that you have a point to prove and the law is that it must return back so the real way to be wealthy is not to look for this and look for this and look for this it's a waste of time the real assignment is that success is what you attract because of who you are becoming as you continue to upgrade to more superior versions of yourself the possibilities in your life start to change to reflect the growth that is happening you don't have to tell people you are being transformed 
the law will insist that certain things start to live your life let me ask you a question where is the first phone you bought do you remember throwing it away do you remember giving anybody where did it go to it's strange because everything on earth is a living thing that phone walked away from you when you grew to a level where it made it unfair to remain with you are you getting what i'm saying now while that phone was there your current phone was looking for you but every time it came the version of you it saw was not the version it was sent to stay with everything you are looking for is looking for you but not this version of you so when god sends these blessings to you it comes and goes back and say i didn't find him whereas you are still there the transformed version of you that will make those possibilities come is not there now we continue to struggle to get these things one by one and they come and the law rejects their stay that's why many things we receive will create physical scenarios and leave us it may come as a loss in business listen to me it may come as whatever you will have a physical explanation but i am telling you it is the invincibility of spiritual laws you will believe that the money left you because you invested in a bad business is the obvious answer not the right one you will believe that the relationship left you just because um, the people are not nice it's not true you attract to your life the possibilities that reflect the growing version of you you have to understand what i'm telling you everything in life is built twice it is first built through your understanding and then it comes physically your mind alongside the holy spirit is the only authorized personalities to enter your future and verify and come back and take your body there if your mind does not lead your body to a place you really didn't get there even if you are there you are going to go back to where your mind is so your mind dreams with god enters your future sees the versions of the possibilities it comes to hold your body and says let's go i saw it it is real while your mind is traveling you are in one small room while your mind is traveling you are in one small corner while your mind is traveling you are wearing a shoe of 200 naira don't mind the shoe your mind is shopping for you already so don't be under pressure your mind has gone to the future and it returns back and says it is unfair for your body to remain in this condition i've gotten there let's go and in it does not matter what your condition is please hear me this is a law you will transit to reflect the version of your mind there are people who buy cars and in two weeks the car starts looking like their mind because they really didn't buy the car twice their mind did not buy the car it was their hand that paid for the car and their mind treats it like an attack and fights it till that car lives their life then your mind says you are back to normal now are we together there are ministers of the gospel that have not transited spiritually and in understanding to certain realms of influence and increase and an opportunity can be given there you will be amazed how they will mess up that opportunity and return back to where they used to be because they they did not really transit to the realm where it made it fair to come now let me show you how true success happens now guys this is what will happen for every step i take you come closer to me watch this i don't see this 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 is too burdensome to change them to chase them one by one the things i need are too many if i use my time to change them i will die chasing them so god created a magnetic system watch this as i grow they come as i grow they come if i backslide in my understanding they go back watch this this is a technology of success while i'm standing here where will i ever meet a media man to interview me if i go around looking for media people that can take my lifetime so god said don't worry it is settled in your growth your assignment 
is that as I grow, so while I'm praying, this is what is happening in the realm of the spirit. While I'm reading a book and saying in the name of Jesus, this is what is happening. Now, because you cannot see it, does not mean it is not happening. This is how you came yesterday by this morning this is where you are now that you are not aware of don't be deceived by what is not in your pocket my brothers and my sisters it is a law backed up by god's integrity this is how we rise in this kingdom we never seek success we stay and dream with God. We stay and dream with the spirit of wisdom. Listen, he said, as it was in the days of my youth. Please give me Job 29, verse 1. Let me show you the way of the ancient. The way that gives peace. The way that will cause you to lay up treasure as dust. Moreover, Job continued in his parable and said, verse 2. All that I wear in the months past, listen, as in the days when God preserved me, listen to the first miracle, when his candle shine, where? There is a candle that shines on your path, but there is a candle that shines on your head. It first starts on your head. You have received the one on your path. Have you received the candle that shines on your head? And when by his light I walked through darkness. Verse 4. It says, as I was in the days of my youth. When the secrets. This is more than ideas. This is more than a company. A company is a child of this mystery. When the secrets of God were upon my tabernacle. As a result, next verse, verse 5. It says, the Almighty was with me. My children were about me, I had six. I washed my steps with butter. The rock poured out rivers of oil. Read on, please. It says, when I went to the gate, I prepared my seat in the street. Uh -huh. Now, listen to this. The young men saw me and they hid themselves because they said, you are not a man. By what mystery do you rise and feed both the vicissitudes of life? It says the aged arose. Old men don't rise up for a small child. But because of the dexterity of my result, the old, they got up and stood. Next verse. The princes refrained and laid their hands on their mouth. No comments. Verse 10. And then we'll stop there. And the nobles held their peace. Their tongues cleaved to the fruit of their mouth. Why? Because his light shined upon my head. There is a spirit Job said in man. And he says the inspiration of the almighty can make any man from any background but under any condition. Listen. Listen to me. Please stand back all of you. The problem is never joblessness. Please find a way of believing me. Your job has been coming, but it didn't find you. The version of you your job is looking for, it has not found. The prayer is not the prayer for a job. Help those under the anointing. Please hear me. Outside, online, inside. You will always attract the dimensions that reflect your transition. Always. Listen, this force is like gravity. It will push any situation till you come out. These that you learned this morning are not cunningly devised fables. No. History is full of men that rose. Please help that person under the anointing. Under any kind of situation. It is not where you are coming from. It is not all of those. It is the understanding. Of the systems the methodologies of the kingdom by his light upon your mind why is my church not growing i know the reason 
your church is reflecting your understanding it will grow and plateau where you stop listen watch this is the reason why if your mind can only receive ten thousand and i give you one million your mind will fight that one million till it gets back to ten thousand and it will stop there it's a law it's not a suggestion you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth listen so while you are in your one room instead of faking a cloth and faking a life and going to a restaurant and eating only once there for the rest of your life while joseph was in prison his mind went to check pharaoh's throne and said i can come here and the mind went back to the prison and carried the body of joseph and brought him there while hadassah listen the version of hadassah the king wanted was not yet ready for the king so when they called hadassah hadassah did not go to the palace she stayed with a guy the keeper of the king's virgin for one year until she became the version the king wanted in one night it is a training that takes time the manifestation works like a charm you can sleep overnight and wake up change listen listen many people will say they came from nowhere there is no man that comes from nowhere it's a lie there is no man that comes from nowhere I can show you the dark days of many great men when only their minds could dare go to their future. 